Good evening, planet Earth, or morning, or afternoon, whatever the case may be. Welcome to Flaviar's world's largest virtual toast. I'm your host this evening, Brad Jaffe, spirits writer, professional drinker, New York Giants fan. But enough about me. We're here to talk about you. Yes, you. All of you here tonight are making history. And all you have to do is drink. That's easy enough. Uh, so our producer, Thad, is going to set a countdown clock right now to 10 minutes. Thad, uh, if you could get us going with that. And uh, let's talk a little bit more about this toast uh, that marks the end of Flaviar's month-long craft spirit celebration. And what a month it's been for drinkers of drams. We've been sharing and tasting top-notch liquids from across the United States and beyond. We have a lot of prizes to give it away too tonight. Uh, so while we wait for a few more last minute stragglers to enter in from every corner, hopefully every continent of the planet, uh, let's get a little bit of rules and housekeeping sorted out. And uh, so yeah, for those of you that were at the webinars and, and were here tonight as well, you're automatically entered to win those prizes. Uh, we'll announce uh, who won at the end of this toast. Uh, don't worry though, if you weren't in any of those workshops because you still have a good chance to win some amazing prizes right now. We're giving away Flaviar memberships, a fully stocked Flaviar home bar, a dozen premium bottles, including three Flaviar originals. I'm drinking one right now, a whiskey advent calendar, and a lot of other cool stuff. I mean, that is like two grand worth of booze, probably a little bit more. Um, and all you have to do is keep commenting below. Uh, tell us your name, where you're watching from, what's in your glass tonight. We really want to know that. We're here to share in our joy and our love of spirit. So obviously you can't have a toast without filling your glass with something awesome. So let us know what you're drinking. We really want to know. Um, for me personally, I am drinking this beautiful uh, Corn Trooper expression. Uh, it's a, one of these Flaviar originals, and it's actually seven different uh, straight bourbons from seven different American distilleries, of course, that have been blended together into this beautiful dram. Whew, I'm, getting t I'm getting some notes of apple peel. Maybe a little bit of maple syrup there and um, petunias. Yep, a little bit of petunias. All right, so um, let's get down to some, uh, some other things. It's not just fun and games here, but we're also doing something worthwhile. And, uh, you know, we're uh, benefiting a good cause here tonight. Um, I'm sure that most of you out there know who Michael Jackson was. Um, not, not the thriller one. Um, but actually, we're talking, of course, about the world's greatest beer and whiskey writer. Uh, well, second, but okay, we can debate that later. But we want to let you all know about the Michael James Jackson Foundation for Brewing and Distilling. Um, we've been working with them for a little while now, and we're honored to have their founder and president, Garrett Oliver, here tonight. So, Garrett, tell us a little bit about uh, what you're doing over there. How you doing, Brad? I'm, Very uh, good, thank you. I am myself drinking both some corn trooper in one hand. Uh, <laughs> in, in the other hand, I've got ragtime rye with yours truly you know, picture in wood on it from our good friends at New York Distilling Company. And this is also a project which benefits the Michael James Jackson Foundation. What we're doing at the Michael James Jackson Foundation is very simple. When you look around our best cocktail bars and our tap rooms and our breweries, we don't really see a group of people who look like America, not all of America. You know, our diversity, a little bit low. And we want everybody else at the party. So at the Michael James Jackson Foundation, what we are doing is donations come in, and then we are putting these towards scholarships for technical education in brewing and distilling for people of color. Uh, it's one of the big barriers to entry. You know, you can either have a few years of experience if you want to work at Brooklyn Brewery, or you need to take in one of these expensive courses. But they are really expensive. They're great, but they're really expensive, and that blocks a lot of people's pathway into the brew house, into the distillery, and therefore into the industry and into the room with all of us. So we want to make sure that that's a doable thing. And uh, it's been going great. We've raised nearly a quarter of a million dollars in just a few, uh, just a few months. And uh, in the first quarter of next year, we're going to be sending people off for their technical education. And uh, these folks are coming back to us as brewers and distillers and uh, boosting up in their careers. So that it by itself awesome. is awesome. Thank you so much for what you're doing. And, and for those of you that, out there that want to learn more uh, about this foundation, uh, it is the MJF, that's Michael Jackson Foundation.org. 
and you can make donations there. And for some of the folks out there globally, uh, we might have more uh, of a whiskey audience than a beer crowd uh, tonight. You know, if, if this man definitely doesn't need any introduction, but for some of the whiskey people, this is Garrett Oliver. He He's the brewmaster at Brooklyn Brewery, and he is one of the original craft brewers out there. It, it must be kind of crazy for you, Garrett, that, you know, you've been a craft brewer for so long that, you know, most of the people now that are into craft brewing weren't even alive when you started. So does that, does that make it's you, well, how does that make you? I, tell, I tell the kids I'm 400 years old. I'm like Dracula. I've always been here. Uh, for those of you who have, who have Jim Meehan's book, his cocktail, his bartender manual, you know, you open it up, you're going to find me in there. Down the street lives David Wondrich. Across over there, Don Lee. All, you know, I was on with Alan Katz last night. You know, all the people, you know, in the New York scene uh, who have really made the cocktail thing big. I can remember when, uh, when bourbon was not that big a deal, you know, out there the way that it is now. And I've watched over the last uh, 20 or 30 years. I have a pretty good collection. Uh, some of it actually poured myself because we use uh, we work with Four Roses for our Black Ops, uh, one of our most famous beers. And so I get in 200 barrels or so every year, empty barrels, but they're not quite empty. <laughs> so in each barrel or so, there's maybe this much whiskey, and you add that times 200, turns out you have some really good barrel stuff. So. Uh, we are well familiar with bourbon in the beer world. And, uh, you know, when I was at, uh, I spoke at Michael's, uh, Michael's memorial service. And I don't want to say it's a funny thing because it was a funeral, but Michael had two families. He had his beer family where he was basically considered a deity. Um, and he had his whiskey family. And we didn't know he had another family. So we're looking across the parking lot and we're like, who are those people? <laughs> and this one man simultaneously was the top writer in both of these fields, which is an amazing achievement. Yeah. And I think that really you can make a very good argument that he was the most influential voice in food and drink in the 20th century. I kid you not. Wow. Um, because uh, certainly craft brewing as we know it would not be here without him. Uh, so uh, I'm looking at this in a certain way as a certain type of distilled beer. That's my, that's my personal connection. Uh, but it's quite yeah. good enough. And of course, it takes a lot of great beer to make a good whiskey, as we all should know, if we don't know already. So now we're going to uh, patch in uh, Michael Emprick, who is an adjudicator with Guinness World Records. And he's just going to go over some very quick rules because we're very official here tonight, folks. We're making history, as we said. So, Michael, what you got for us? Hey, Brad, I'm so excited to be here. So, your viewers may not know it, but this is an official Guinness World Records title attempt for the most viewers for a toasting live stream on YouTube. Um, this is a new record, and whenever we have a new record, we set a minimum. The minimum for this record is 1,500 viewers for the live stream. And specifically, the live stream has to be related to toasting. So things like what makes a good toast? What, uh, what's the history of toasting? Those sort of uh, little bits and pieces that viewers may not know. So I'm really excited to be here and see where you end up tonight. Awesome. Michael, thank you so much for uh, adjudicating as an adjudicator should do. And a uh, perfect segue when you're talking about history of toasting, because I've got my friends here, Chad and Sarah, from the wildly popular YouTube series, It's Bourbon Night. It's Bourbon Night, so check them out if you're not already following or watching them. And uh, how's it going, Chad and Sarah? Pretty good, we're yeah. excited to be here. Yeah, we, we love excited toast. to make history we or love, what? Yeah, we love light toast, we love dark toast, <laughs> all types of toast. Right, and bourbon. Uh, we're okay. big experts on the toast. It's not that kind of toast. Awesome. Oh, dear. How much do you know about uh, the history of this tradition of toasting? I would say bagel. <laughs> it's bagel with it. toast. No, no, no. We came here to learn. We came here to learn. I mean, okay. we've we've toasted a lot. But I don't actually know anything about why we do that. We're, yeah, we've come here to learn. Well, so There are have... people out there that believe erroneously that uh, the toast was born from, you know, back in the day, you'd want to toast your, your rival or you wanted to make sure that your drinking buddy wasn't trying to poison you. So you'd clink the glass and, uh, you know, make sure that some of their liquid spilled over into your glass. Most people have heard that before. That's wrong. That's wrong. And I want to set the record straight here tonight. That is apocryphal. And we do not want to spread 
any misinformation. Actually, um, most people, most historians um, kind of, you know, they, they don't know. Nobody can point to their exact origins of where the first toast came from. But scholars can agree, historical scholars, that it is a remnant uh, from the days of religious sacrifices, actually, where there would be an offering of a sacred liquid or, you know, blood offered up to the gods in exchange for health, long life, fertility, what have you. Um, so, you know, hopefully there's something a little bit more palatable in your glass night. What are you guys drinking? Hopefully not blood. Uh, no, <laughs> something just a little more special. <laughs> we okay. have the Parker's Heritage <laughs> Heavy Char Rye. So this is their la uh, release from 2019. Yeah, we, uh, you know, they did the heavy char bourbon this year. We haven't been able to get a bottle. So if anyone out there has one. Chad, no, it's not that like, time for that. Mm -hmm. No. But we've had it and it's delicious. <laughs> but the only one that we have a bottle of is, as Sarah said, last year's. And it's the rye. And it's so. It felt appropriate for this special so, occasion. So good. Yeah. Well, I mean, you guys are really, my guests are really showing me up tonight. Because you guys have this beautiful, very exceptional rye. Um, and, and Garrett over here has a bottle with his own freaking picture on it you know i don't have that so thank you for showing me up i appreciate that but actually we're ready now to uh to go to a toast so um you know i would like to thank everybody you know the challenges of 2020 have been nothing short of monumental um it has made the notion of camaraderie even in the virtual space all the more precious. So I truly cherish this opportunity to bring folks together for a brief moment of shared celebration while raising awareness and funds for a worthwhile cause. Thank you, Garrett. And let's be honest, breaking a Guinness World Record is kind of badass too. So here's to being together. Oh, and fuck you 2020. There we go. That's a weird moment. I'm used to hearing the clinks when that happens. Um, so for those of you that don't know, um, you know, I'm a professional drinker, as I said, but I wasn't always this incredible Toastmaster that you see here tonight. This is kind of a new hat for me. I wasn't born this way. Um, I was once very recently uh, a mere Toast amateur, and it took a very, very special someone to get me to this position, to where I am. And, and thankfully, I have that whole kind of process on video. So Thad, if you wouldn't mind um, showing, showing our viewers at home about that, please. So it's been a very special year. We found ways to stay connected while in isolation. And I think it's time that we take a toast. Did somebody say roast? Whoa. Dean Martin? That's my name. Don't wear it out, Pally. But what, Dean, I thought. You thought what? Where have you been? I thought you were. I was on. I was on the nineteenth hole. It's got a bad par. Well, what are, what are you doing here right now? Well, I heard you talking about roasting, so I figured I'd give you a hand. Well, we're actually here for a toast, but. Well, I... then I'll give you two hands if you're toasting. Uh, all right. Well, I mean, I could use your help if if you think you could be of service. Well, I'm always here to be of service, but you know, my glass is a little dehydrated. Oh well, you know, we have something right here for you. Well, I never refuse a good Christian act. <laughs> Don't be shy. Have you tried Corn Trooper yet? Try that again. <laughs> oh, that's a little heavy. I like that. No, as a matter of fact, I haven't, but I'm going to let it breathe. Well, I hear you're a bourbon drinker. Is that true? Hold on. I'm giving myself a whiskey facial. <laughs> yeah, I've been known to tip back a few bit of the ambers. All right. Well, I think you might enjoy this dram then. We've got seven bourbons all in one, so. Oh, look at that. Snow White and the seven bourbons. I love that story. <laughs> So we're actually here. It's good timing, I guess, for you to show up. I mean, we're setting a world record here tonight. No kidding. Yeah, absolutely. You in the Guinness Book of World Records already? or? Well, for a couple of things, but we can't talk about that here. All right. Well, hopefully this will be a little bit more appropriate for uh, an, a more uh, inclusive audience. Well, if you got a toast, why don't you lay it on me? All right. Well, here goes. I mean, I'm a history buff, you know, student of history. So for my toast, I really wanted to turn back the page to one of the earliest recorded toasts in history. Is that correct? Really? Yeah, that's uh, back in the year 450. Maybe you even remember that time period. But Yeah, as a matter of fact, I remember it well, 450. It was in the afternoon, I believe. Yeah, it was. And so back then, uh, there was a wonderful king of uh, the Britain, I believe it was called, the country yeah. that we know today. Oh, yeah. And um, King Vertigan had oh. a toast in his honor. I had one of those once. Yeah, absolutely. A Vertigan? And it was a toast. I didn't know at the time, but she, 
She was good. Well, hopefully uh, it stacks up to this beautiful toast that was written in his honor by the Lord of the Saxon army, who was a man named Hentiga, who put it best when he said, to good health. Okay. Well, I guess that toast needs to go back in the toaster. <laughs> you know, I think if you want to give a toast, you want to do something that people are going to remember, you know? You got to give it a little spice. You got to, you got to put a little kick in it. Wait, so you, you didn't like that one? Well, on a, on a scale of one to ten, I'd say it was not on a scale. Um, so wh what are you saying that... I don't, should, should I make it rhyme? I get, I get uh, it. No, no, I'll put a little no, bit of rhyme. Yeah, well, it. I mean, you know, you know, just reach down in the bottom of your soul and bring up something. Well, you're you're a singy kind of guy. You're a lyricist, so you know. Maybe yeah, make we'll it do lyrical. Something. Roll it off your tongue okay. like a couple of okay. bagels. Well, we'll do something that rhymes then. Okay. Yeah. Drink today and drown all sorrows. You shall perhaps not do it tomorrow. Best while you have it. Use your breath. There is no drinking after death. Uh, Sorry about that. Man, that's, uh, that's flatter than yesterday's beer. You know, let's just try this again, okay? Let's, um, why don't you do this? Why don't you, why don't you clear your mind? It shouldn't be too hard to do, a little, a little problem. Clear your mind and, and, and think about the perfect Paul. Yeah, well, I mean, Dean it. And then, hold it, somebody's talking and somebody better be listening. So think about the perfect Paul. And think about the perfect world. Then, take the glass, put it to your lips, take a little sip. I can do that. That's it. Now forget everything I said. Okay. And make it funny. May your hands always be busy. May your feet always be swift. May you have a strong foundation when the winds of changes shift. May your heart always be joyful. May your song always be sung. May you stay forever young. Cheers, everyone. Here's to history. I'll drink to that. Oh, my God. We just toasted with Team Martin. <laughs> Woo! I tell you, kid, that was, uh, that was something. I, um, I'm flabbergasted. I don't even know the definition of that word. But I could have sworn I heard that somewhere before. No, no, that's, that's an original. You just wrote that. You, you helped me with it, so thank you for that. That was great. Thanks, Dean. I mean, that, I couldn't have done that without you, so I actually owe you a debt of gratitude. Well, as a matter of fact, you do. But I was happy to be of service. And to all the folks out there in the Flaviar community, and, uh, well, this wonderful, wonderful toast. Uh, well, this has been great, Dean Martin. Do you want to go get a drink? Oh, hmm. Show me the way to go home. I'm tired and I want to go to bed. I had a little drink about an hour ago and it went right to my head. No matter where I roam, everybody on land or sea or foam, you will always hear me singing my song. Show me the way to go home. Bum, bum. See you, Pally. Uh, um, okay, um, that was weird and cool and awesome and weird and awesome. Um, okay, uh, Dennis, uh, play us a message from Flaviar, and uh, when we come back, I'm going to be collected, and uh, we'll announce the winners from our contest. Oh, what a unique gift. What do you get for the guy who has everything? My dad has about a million interests, but his favorite thing in the world is a good single malt scotch whiskey. And Flaviar is right on the money. It was so easy to treat my dad to a membership and pick just the right box. Ah, look at that. You get one tasting box a quarter, and then that will help you choose your full bottle based on, what based on your samples. What a great idea. Flaviar is gonna be a tough one to beat. In a world where smoothness is the most important feature of whiskey, one man has started a holy war to bring back smoke. He was born to a peat digger, and after he lost everything and everyone, he took care of his homeland. He smoked out his rivals for Pete's sake. The second time around, he realized that just wasn't enough and that he needed to be the dark change he wanted to see in the world. 
So fueled by peat and infernal fire, he crossed the ocean and blended in the godforsaken bowels of the wicked city. He was the fire, and smoke followed him in his wake. The neon-lit metropolis was saved from the sleek and tranquil villain of smoothness. He took a hell of a peating, that's for sure. The son thought he left that life behind, but now, more than ever, the world needs him. The world needs redemption. Some people just want to see the world go up in smoke. Son of a Pete Batch 3, the Redeemer, out now. Five, four, oh, oh, and we're back, sorry. Now, there was an ad for Son of a Pete. Those of you who uh, know uh, about Son of a Pete, probably excited as hell. Uh, and those who don't, well, why don't I just tell you? Son of a Pete is uh, Flaviar's own member-exclusive peated scotch blend. Batches one and two were sold out in a heartbeat and are considered cult classics by Flaviar members and basically anybody who has taste. Uh, right now, at this very moment, they're releasing Son of a Pete, volume three. It's cast strength and peatier than its predecessors. It's available tonight for pre-orders, but only for Flaviar members. If you are a member, reserve your bottle at stunofapete.com. You should know how to spell peat. Otherwise, you probably don't deserve this bottle, but it is P-E-A-T. Um, if you're not a member, well, now is a good time to become one. Um, hurry up because this bottle is going to go fast. It's probably going to go faster than we even annihilated this world record tonight. Um, so thank you everybody for being a part of that. Um, we now are at the exciting part where we're going to announce, uh, our winners. Um, so members, if you are a member again, uh, contact customer care to claim your prizes. And for the non-members, don't contact us. We'll contact you or you could contact customer care and we will make sure that you get your bottle. Um, so um, we have a social media giveaway bottle of Corn Trooper and we want to give a toast to uh, I dream of genie. I underscore dream underscore of underscore genie. Check your DMs to claim your bottle. You are a winner. All right. Cheers. How about that? How about that, guys? Um, next, uh, we get a prize winner of Blackened, a bottle of Blackened. And this will go out, Blackened American, blended American whiskey, will go out to Jackie Moreno. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Are you guys, are you guys toast, uh, tired of, of toasting yet? Or no, not at all. All right. And next, we are going to go to the prize winner for Compass Box which is a beautiful limited edition peat monster arcana, which is a pretty difficult bottle to get your hands on. Uh, and that goes out to Kaylee Canfield. Kaylee Canfield, you are our winner of the Compass Box limited edition peat monster. Uh, we have another corn trooper bottle that we're giving out. Um, Flaviar's very own corn trooper goes out to Douglas Blum. Do you say Blum? Do you guys say Blum or do you say Bloom? How do you guys like to say that in Kentucky? I know you guys pronounce some things different than, than I do. Oh, um, well, I can't see the spelling, but I guess Blum. I'm going to go with your first instinct. Blum. I like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and you guys, of course, are joining us from Lexington, Kentucky. Um, yeah. do, they, do they make any whiskey around there? I don't know. You know, I've, I've heard of a few places, um, mm -hmm. but just, we don't get out much. Just like around 95%. Of the of the world's of, bourbon. Of the world's bourbon. Ninety five. Yeah. I hear you have some great limestone water over there. I gotta go check that out. It's pretty good. Pretty good. They so, say it has an impact. They say it has an impact. Mm. And how's the water out of your faucet? Is it pretty good? It's delicious. Uh, okay. <laughs> After it goes to the brim. Well, I'm like the little girl from Signs. I'm very particular about the water. Wow. It's contaminated. Nice throwback. Nice reference. Yeah. M. Night Shyamalan. All right. <laughs> so uh, now we have a bottle of Ichiro's Malt, beautiful Japanese whiskey uh, from the Chichibu Distillery in Chichibu Prefecture. Uh, we have Diego 
de los Rios, of the river, is what that translates to. Diego, de los Rios, you have won a limited edition malt and grain bottle from Itro's Malt. Lucky you. That is a great, great whiskey. Um, have you guys tried that? That would be a negative. That's we haven't, cool. but we'd love to. Okay. So you guys are more into the into the uh, American whiskey. Do you, do you dabble in scotch? Do you dabble in Japanese? We dabble. When forced. No, I'm just kidding. We we do dabble a little. Okay. Yeah, no, our, our viewers to sure likes that. to send us scotch. <laughs> I'm trying to look at that back bar that you have there, which is really beautiful, by the way, with that tiered situation. Um, and, and, and I'm not seeing any... It's all American. It's looking very American, very patriotic back there. Good for you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. We thank do you. all we can. <laughs> well, you know what we like to say. We like to say, drink more bourbon. <laughs> it does not say drink more scotch on that shirt, just for the Could record. I, I mean, you you do you. We always say that. Yeah. Drink, but drink for us, born Kentuckians. Uh -huh. It's bourbon. It's bourbon. And rye. How and about rye. this? Drink Drink the same amount of scotch, but drink more bourbon. Mm. Oh, I like that. I can get on board. Okay. Yeah. okay. You're not telling people to drink less scotch. Just drink the same yeah. amount, but drink more bourbon. Drink okay. More. That's bourbon. great. Bourbon. That's yeah. 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 So speaking of scotch, uh, as a segue, we have McAllen branded glassware. Um, mm -hmm. and that is our winner of the McAllen branded glassware is Elizabeth Peterson. Elizabeth Peterson, come on down. No, don't come on down. We're going to stay socially distant, but you get the reference. Uh, Mount Gay, Master Blender Collection. Now we're going into the world of rum and a beautiful Bayesian rum, Barbados, for those of you out there that are keeping score. We have a prize winner is Akeem Bryan. Akeem Bryan, you have won a bottle of Mount Gay, Master Blender Collection. And now we're going to the good stuff. Isla, how do you guys feel about the Pete stuff? Are you, are you guys... No? Okay. 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 My okay. palate's not there yet. All right. All right. Um, <laughs> we, <laughs> well, then you're definitely um, not going to be a fan of a lot of the Brook Lottie expressions that tend to be a little heavy handed on the peat in all the best ways. For me, that's great. I mean, um, we've had it. We've had. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's some entry. There's some Brook Lottie expressions that are not peated at all that are fantastic. It even says right on the label, in case you could get confused, uh, not peated. This is not a peated expression. Thank you. I will try that, and I will love it. This one is not one of those. It is the Port Charlotte Cask Edition OLC, clocking in at 55.1%. The prize winner is Sacha Belor. Sacha Belor, you have won the Brook Lottie Port Charlotte Cask Edition. And then we have, oh, now we're going to India. We have the Amrut branded limited edition handmade water dropper set is going to Laura Fisher. Laura Fisher, you have won that. Let's let's toast Laura Fisher. Laura Fisher. Hey, you, Laura. You've earned it. Drink more bourbon. Drink more Indian whiskey, too. Because, you know, Indian single malt is, is actually pretty sensational. All right. So now we have the Flaviar memberships. We have... Uh, oh my goodness, we have 10 different winners for Flaviar memberships, and we are going to go through them quickly um, because you guys probably need to pour some more whiskey into your glass. We have Linda Ortegas from Florida. We have Grady Silberman from California. Kristen Toyama from Arizona. What, what is Arizona? What's that? Is that the cactus state? What would you guess that was? Uh, <laughs> Wait, put on. this on the spot. I have uh, no idea. Yes, it's a state. <laughs> Cactus. I'm gonna go with that. Well, you guys are the bluegrass state. Everybody right. should know sure. that. But yes. I mean, what's what's sure Arizona? Not Cactus state. <laughs> <laughs> Cactus state. What else are you associating with go Arizona with aside from a dry heat? Right. Um, I'm okay. A dry heat state. It's a dry heat state. Yeah. <laughs> dry heat state. Dominic. Pay Benetto. Dominic Pay Benetto from New Jersey. Do you guys know what New Jersey is? <laughs> the, garden the garden state. state. The garden state. We Where's have a winner. Money? I know I that. Don't have a bottle for you, but you have won this brown. Thank, thank uh, you, Zach Braff, for making that movie so we know that it's the garden state. <laughs> Ryan Beatty from California. We all know the golden state. M Rose 171. Is this like an AOL handle? I don't know. But M Rose 171 from New York, the Empire State. Colin Pelcher from New York as well. Cheers to you. Andrew Anderson from Washington. Robin DeLeon from New York, Elio 
Bear, oh geez, I've been doing so good with these names, but this you is a it. lot. Of, this is a lot of syllables, folks. This is Elio Birodinelli from Washington, which is what is Washington? That's is that the Grand Canyon State? Mm. Yeah, oh that, no! Uh, oh no! I don't know. Go to commercial. <laughs> okay. Phone a friend. <laughs> We're almost there. We're almost there. Now we're going to kick it to you guys, actually. Chad, Sarah, we want you guys to share the most important prize of the night, the grand prize winner. Tell us who's won. Yes. Chad, please do the honors. Well, tell them what they're going to win. Well, they're going to win the Flaviar Home Bar. Oh, my. I wish I had a curtain. I could do just like on Will Fortune. A whole bar. We're not set up for that. A whole new bar. (laughs) I like it. All right. And the winner is... Corey Piper from New York. Congratulations, Corey. You did it. Good job. You didn't even let me do a drum roll. Sorry. Well, yeah, there we go. This has been fantastic. Can you pour me some of that uh, pappy that you have back there? Would you mind? Sure, come on Just, over. As long as you stay <laughs> mosey on down. Six feet. Six All feet right. I'm, yeah. I'm actually getting in my car right now. Okay. Uh, and uh, I'll see you. Next right. time you're in Kentucky. Yeah, well, I actually live in Versailles, so you guys don't know what you just did to yourself, so. Perfect. <laughs> I don't. I don't live in Versailles, but I do know how to pronounce Versailles. He knows so. Versailles. He knows Versailles. He's on to us. He huh? didn't say Versailles. <laughs> All right, well, Chad, Sarah, Garrett, Michael, Guinness World Records, everybody, this has been so much fun. This has been a night I know I will never forget. Are you guys ever going to forget this night? I'm no, nev- I'm never going to forget it. I've never helped yeah. set a world record before. So it's it's a first for me. How many times have you been in the Guinness Book of World Records? Zero. This makes one. OK, well, that's a that's a record in. No, somebody's probably beaten that record. I bet you there's somebody that has like 20 different entries into the world records. But sure. you, you got to start somewhere, folks. You've got to start somewhere. You've got to dream big. And, uh, you know, it's been incredibly special. And we got to thank everybody that made it happen. Uh, and on behalf of Flaviar. Guinness World Records, the Michael James Jackson Foundation, of course, all of our partners out there, I want to say, stay safe, stay healthy. Until next time, check you later.